I'm here with Wes from Shawnee Hills, and behind me is his trailer that he built himself. It's been about two years. Two years, two almost years. to the date. Since he, uh, I don't want to say finished it, but since he got it to a usable state. And then a year ago, we did a walk around of it. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same kind of thing again. Uh, we're going to walk around, see how things have changed, see any modifications he's had, and then uh, ask some of the questions that you as the viewers have had since we last published the video. Uh, in the last year, Wes has taken this, uh, what, how many thousands of miles? A lot. 15,000 miles in two years. 15,000 miles, and that's just all over the country. A lot of it has been around here in Kentucky, uh, but we've both gone up to um, uh, Canada, through Maine, done some stuff in Vermont, New Hampshire, we've gone out west to Utah. Um, you've taken this around Moab too, haven't Moab, you? Moab, Arizona. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico. Else? Wyoming. Colorado. South, South Dakota. Dakota. I mean, just all over the country. So it, it's seen some miles and it's seen some tough miles. So let's see how it's held up. Um, especially, this is kind of addressing quite a few comments when you first started making this about how the type of construction you had wasn't gonna last. It wouldn't hold up. Yeah, so well, how, you tell us uh, what kind of construction is this? How did you build this? The main body is a plywood construction, three quarter inch plywood. It was screwed together at the corners and then once the body was complete, at every corner on the inside there is a one by one cleat that is glued and screwed inside. Over top of the entire body is a layer of fiberglass cloth and epoxy resin and then we've rhino lined the entire bottom and up about a foot on the sides. Okay, so this doesn't have any kind of frame. There is no framing in there like you traditionally see. So there are plenty of teardrop trailers available on the market. Why did you choose to make your own? The biggest reason I made my own is because of the size of my family. It seems like the entire market is geared at either a family of two or maybe one extra child. But I have a wife and three kids, and so I need to be able to sleep five people and a dog in a very small space. So it took some not just outside the box thinking, but thinking specifically for my problem. So this has a very unique feature that you don't see on a lot of teardrop trailers. Yes, it has a pop top. Um, and not just a clamshell, but a full, all four corners pop up and raises an additional uh, three and a half feet. Tell us what we've got going on here. So we've got a sink, stove, cabinets and typically there is a water heater here but it's currently winterized so I remove the uh, the water heater anytime that's going to be below 30 degrees. The cabinets are made from half inch plywood and this is all from one sheet and then the latches are window sash latches. All right let's see let's see the key feature of this let's see the magic show us how you pop the top. Each corner has a latch, and you just loosen it, and once you loosen all four corners, the top will just pop up. So talk me through the mechanism that lifts this. So I have four gas struts, one at each corner. They are 120 pound struts. And then I have these laminated lift arms. They're plywood in the center and aluminum on the inside and outside. And they lift the whole entire roof up. So that means you do pretty much none of the work. Yeah, unless you're at really high altitude, <laughs> then it's a little bit harder to lift up. But uh, for the most part, you're just guiding it up. So what do you have that strength, uh, strengthens this to like help with the wind? Got uh, three um, support rods here. They are, it's conduit that is bent in a, uh, a U-shape that's kind of splayed out and it resists shear forces left and right and front and back. So wind or just shaking. So you got one on that side. One in the front and then one on the passenger side as well. One behind me. I was going to put one at the rear, but it's just too hard to climb up over the bunk to put it in. So. I just don't ever put it there. Makes sense. Uh, well, what are the sleeping arrangements here for you and your two, three children? So the bottom is a queen size bed that pulls out. It's a couch. Um, when it's bedtime, we pull it out. It makes a full queen size bed. You'll have to show us that in a second. Up top here, we have a uh, oversized twin. 
and then flip out to the front is a more of a cot. It's definitely not quite a twin size wide, but my son sleeps there. He's the youngest. Yes. The littlest. All right, so there are two latches on the side that keep the door drawers from opening up while we're driving. And then there's also these latches. So it's easiest if you go ahead and just pull the drawers out. So the drawers kind of act like a base? Yeah, the drawers support the bed while we're out. So which way do you sleep on this? We sleep, you know, we're kind of short. So for the most part, we sleep sideways. And I'm 5'10", I've got a few inches to spare. Now, if it's just me or me and one of my children, then I'll sleep at an angle to get even more space. But uh, we have actually slept long ways. I've got another section of mattress that goes in on the end that the drawers can hold up. But without it, then your feet hang over here. So what have you got going on here? This is our catalytic heater. It is the uh, safest heater that I could find. It uh, does not have an open flame. You do need to have ventilation, which we have plenty of that. And um, we also have a CO detector just for safety. But it has been amazing. If anything, I probably should have got a smaller heater. Even on a zero degree night, we have laid here and just burn up, had no blankets or anything on. So when it's hot, what do you do? I've got the Max fan. It is amazing. I absolutely love it. When we started out and first built this, I used just a regular cheap RV fan and I hated it. Luckily I hit a branch and broke the top off and so I had to replace it anyway. This thing moves so much air and you can set it, it has a thermostat on it to where you can set it to a certain temperature. If we just crack the window on the side and turn that on, it is a constant breeze. And even this summer out in the desert, it just was amazing. So what do you do for power? In the galley, I actually have behind a fake panel a 160 amp hour battery. It runs off my alternator while I'm driving. And then I also have a plug up for solar panels. So I can, if I'm parked in the same spot, I can plug solar panels in. So I know around the back here, you've got a shower. And this is obviously the only reason I invite you on the trips. So I have some way of showering, keeping clean. Show us how this works. This is also the only reason my wife will go with me. So as we said earlier, there's typically a water heater right inside this uh, louvered panel. And we can open it up and bring the head out through there and then shower folds out and we have a little wood uh, I don't know floor mat grate that we put in there to uh, either set the potty on or to uh, I just called it a potty <laughs> you did sorry I keep going <laughs> you could tell I have kids can't you uh, we get the grate they are stand on so we're not getting our feet in the mud while we're taking a shower and this has been one of my favorite parts on, especially out west when you're dirty and dry every day. It's been so nice at the end of every day to be able to take a shower while everybody else is just stinking. Yeah, except me, because I also use it. Steal your water. I'm uh, talking of stealing your water. Well, how long does the water last? Um, we've got 20 gallons and, um, you know, if we are trying to be careful with it and just take quick showers, turn it on, get wet, turn it off, lather up, and then rinse off. It can last us for over a week with five of us. Seems pretty easy to set up as well, or to put up. And I mean, not just so fast to put down, but like you said, it goes up almost as quick. It's not like those, um, what do they call it? Those tents, the pop-up tents that you can the shower. The easy ups, in. but hard yeah. down. Those things take for, like trying to figure out how to fold those things up. And you know, this has probably been the biggest changer in the comfort of camping. Something about having a hot shower just makes it so much better. Now you got plans for those, don't you? Yes, I do. They're at my website, uh, shawneehillsworkshop.com. It's the DIY ensuite. If you go to my website, click on projects, scroll down, and the uh, first section will be 
overlanding related projects and this will be on there. So obviously this has been one of the most popular videos on both of our channels is the walk around uh, last year. And then we've had several comments saying it's not gonna stand up. One of my favorites was the one that said junk, get a hotel. So how has it held up? You know, it has held up surprisingly well. Um, so far in you know two years, 15,000 miles with all those miles being hard, either off-road or interstate, um, the one thing that I ended up having to modify was the mounting point for the lift arms. And so I I'm currently have a prototype in there of a modification to make to see how it holds up. But other than that, the only other damage has been self-inflicted. <laughs> like, like that? Yeah, like that. How I may or that? may not have backed into my garage. Oh, <laughs> that's not even on the trail. <laughs> no, that's not on the trail. I, uh, what about the fiberglass? Yeah, I cracked the fiberglass right there too when I hit it. The thing on the camper that has received the most damage, um, and it is trail related, but it's the steps. The steps was not part of the original plan, but my wife and kids wanted to make it easier to get up into the camper. And it does that, but it is by far the low hanging fruit. And every time I go out, I hit this on something and then I have to beat it back with a sledgehammer. How long did it take you to make this? It took me one month to get it usable. Um, and that was to have a roof on, have it completely watertight. But my son and I were sleeping in sleeping bags on plywood on the inside. Um, it took another six months after that to do the finishing touches, but we were using it the entire time and just working slowly, you know, here and there. And how much did it cost you? To get it rolling and to, for the first time out, it was about $1,200. Now I already had most of the metal for the frame, but I had to buy new axles, leaf springs, the hitch, and all the material for this. So $1,200 without the pop top? That's, the top was there, but the material wasn't there. The interior wasn't finished, anything like that. None of the utilities were in, none of the cabinets. It was just a plywood box. So what about as you see it now with things like the trailer brakes, all the electronics, the pop top fully functioning? The trailer brakes were on it originally, but all the interior stuff, um, basically if you watch my videos on my channel, the first video was $1,200. To get it to the end of the second video, totaled up to be in just over $5,000. Big jump. Big jump, yeah. But also all that stuff isn't necessary either. How much does it weigh dry? I don't know the exact weight. Um, because I know the weight of each sheet of plywood, and I know how many sheets of plywood I use, I know the weight of the fiberglass, I estimate it to be right around 2,000 or just under. Um, I also believe that because I used to tow this with my, with my XJ, and it had no problems towing it. So I don't think it can be much more than 2,000 pounds. So since you got it to a point where you uh, consider it to be finished, what revisions have you made? One of the first revisions I made was while we were in Colorado last year. Something I never had experienced here in Kentucky is how dry and dusty it was out there. And the first day after riding on the trails, we opened up the uh, galley and the entire kitchen was covered in dust. And I don't mean just a little, I mean a thick layer of dust. So we added this weather stripping and then I have a furnace filter that straps to the louvered vent here. And since then I've had no issues. If you could change anything. So say you started again, completely from scratch, what would you have done different? Um, there's a couple things. One, I would have started with all new metal on the frame. Um, when I started this project, I was not ex planning on taking it to the extent that I did. And I used old metal from an old trailer frame that was here on the property. And that's something I've regretted ever since. Luckily it's only held on by six bolts so I can build a new frame and put under that. The other thing is the galley. As much as I like this, I would rather have the interior space. If I was to have it to do it over again, I would move the galley to underneath the bed and have it pull out. So mine and my wife's bed would move back another 21 inches or so. So you'd have, so the kitchen space would be basically where the drawers are or where some of the drawers are now? Yes, exactly. Well, to the back part of the drawers, it's actually it would be directly under where the kitchen's at now. It would just pull out the side. So all this stove and sink would just pull out the side here. What are you most proud of on this trailer? You know, that, that's a hard question. Honestly, um, I'm proud of the entire thing. I think the biggest thing to think about is two years ago when I built this, there were no videos on YouTube. The best that you might find is just a regular teardrop. You know, a lot of people built these since I built mine. But at the time I built mine, there was no information out there. So all this is from scratch, from my head, from, you know, the ground up, every bit of it.
One of the things I like most about this design is that you can still use it like a traditional teardrop if the top's not up. So lots of times in the winter, if it's just me and my son, we won't even pop the top. We'll just get in and sleep on the bed on the bottom. So let's say someone else wanted one of these. Do you build them for other people? No, I get emails almost weekly asking me to build one and have been offered large amounts of money, but it's just not something I'm interested in. So how could someone get one of these if they wanted something like this or similar? I sell plans on my website, shawneehillsworkshop.com. You can either build it yourself or buy the plans and then have a builder build it for you. And actually, uh, right now, I'm gonna offer a 10% discount for anybody that's watching this video. I'm sure that Rob will put a uh, coupon code up, but also, if you become a Patreon of either one of our Patreon pages, there'll be an additional 10% on top of that. So have you ever thought about selling this? Yes, I have. Um, only because I've got another project in mind that I could use the money to fund. What is that? If it happens, there's a thought of building a DIY earth roamer. So it may or may not happen, but that's what I'm looking at right now. If it does, you can guarantee it's going to be on probably both of our channels. It will be. It, it will also probably consume the next year of my life. Oh, I can't wait. I really hope it happens. Um, so just a little recap. Tell us again, where can we find plans, part lists, any other information on this? ShawneeHillsWorkshop.com. Click on the Projects button, and the first section will be Overlanding Related Projects. So all of the plans and the parts list, full parts list is on yep. there. And, and all the parts uh, list are free. And the complete build videos. Complete build, build videos are linked there as well, or you can go to my uh, YouTube channel, Shawnee Hills Workshop. Cool. Thanks for showing us around. Thank you. Check out some of the trailers that other people have built or adapted from the plans on ShawneeHillsWorkshop.com. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more, you can watch the full build playlist on the Shawnee Hills YouTube channel and the Expedition Utah playlist on the Revere Overland channel.